In this video, we're going to take you through the process of setting up a baking of lighting into textures. So this is great if you want to reapply the textures to your object uh, so that you don't have to re-render them for real-time rendering or if you want to use them in a game engine or whatever. Uh, but let me show you the process here. So in this scene, of course, we have our space pilot. I'm using the space pilot.c4d scene. And he's made up of several objects. And of course we have an environment and lighting and all of that kind of good stuff set up. So let's take a look at what the render looks like. I'll open up the live viewer and let's do a render. So we can see here is our space pilot. And you can see he's being lit by an area light, this casting light right here. And then of course also the environment's adding some light as well. So let's close this and let's set a few things up. First thing, we need to set up the uh, size of our image. So I'm going to go to Render, Edit Render Settings, or Control B, and let's set up the size of our image. I'm just going to do 1024 by 1024. Since this is going to be a texture, we want a square image. And then the next thing I'm going to do is let's go to the Octane uh, dialog and let's create a new object. So I'll create a new Octane camera. And uh, let's rename this. We'll call it Baking Cam. Set it to our rendering camera. And uh, I'm going to go into the settings for this under the Octane camera tag. And I'm going to set the camera type to Baking. And you'll see down here that the most important setting to make note of is the baking group ID. So this determines what objects are going to be rendered when we do a render using the baking camera. So what we need to do is set up our objects in our scene that we want to bake the lighting for so that they have the same baking group ID as the camera. So I like to use just an arbitrary number that's easy to remember, especially if you have a scene that has a lot of objects in it. I'm going to set my baking group ID to 10. And now let's go down here and take a look at our space pilot. And he's made up of several objects. Let's close this group. So we're going to focus on the body here. So the pants, hands, boots, head, eye, and torso. So if we take a look at the node editor, and I'm going to select the pilot material down here and graph it and take a look at the image. I'll hit the edit button so we can see it kind of close. So we can see that uh, all these different parts are arranged in the same uh, texture space. And the parts that are arranged here that are the ones that this material is applied to is the pants, hands, boot, and torso. So not the head or the eyes. Those are in a different texture space. So let's add uh, an octane object tag to these objects. So I'll select the pants. And we'll go into tags. C4D object tag. And here in the uh, options, under object layer, I'm going to set the bake ID to 10. Let's do the same thing for the hands. So we'll create tags, C4D octane tag, object tag, go into object layer, bake ID 10. Let's do the boots. Object layer, bake ID 10, and then finally the torso. Set the bake ID to 10. Okay, so now we have our Octane object tags set up. Baking ID is set up. And let's go into the live viewer. Let's shrink this down just a little bit. And let's do a render. So what we see here, let's make sure that this is square. There we go. Uh, what we see here is the objects that share that object, uh, that baking uh, ID tag. And you can see the lighting is baked into the surface. So I can prove this by Selecting, say, our area light. This is the uh, light that's right here. This is the light. 
So select that light and we can close this. And we can close the node editor. Go to the octane light tag and I can change the temperature. So if I bring it down, it's gonna make the light warm in color. If I bring it up, it's gonna make cool. So that just shows you that indeed the lighting in the scene is definitely being baked into the textures. Of course, you could save this out as uh, an EXR or a PNG and then reapply this to your object uh, in your scene to have that lighting baked in uh, when you're looking at it in real time. So next, let's take a look at how we can actually use render passes uh, when we're baking the lighting into the textures. So let's set up some render passes. I'm going to close this real quick and let's go into render, uh, edit render settings. Make sure we're an octane renderer. And let's, let's go to render passes. I'm just going to set up a few just to sort of demonstrate. So we can do, let's say diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, reflection direct, and reflection indirect. But of course, there's plenty more passes that you can use. It should be good enough for now. Let's make sure that enable is on and let's close this. And then go into the Octane Live Viewer. Let's do another render. And then we can go down here to the bottom of the Live Viewer and check out the different passes. So there's Diffuse Direct, Diffuse Indirect, Reflection Direct, and Reflection Indirect. So you could save these out as well. You could even render out using Batch Render a multi-channel EXR if you wanted to do that uh, so that you had all the channels into one image. So let's take a look at rendering out one of these images and reapplying it in Cinema 4D. So I'll go to Octane Live Viewer window. Let's make sure that we lock the resolution so that we actually get a nice square image. There we go. Give it a few moments to render. I've only got it at 800 samples, so that's not super high. So it shouldn't take too long to render. That looks pretty good. So let's save this out as a 16-bit image. I'm going to save it to Space Pilot Baked Light. Let's choose Save. Let's create a new material. And I'm going to apply this to Pants. And hands and boots and torso. And then let's edit this. And for the texture, I'm going to use that baked light texture. And then we can see here is the result. So just to make this look a little bit better in the OpenGL preview, of course, we can go into the editor. Let's set the editor display to just color since everything else is baked in. And let's set the texture preview size to 1024 by 1024. And now you can see it looks much nicer. Of course, if we move the lights in the scene, since the lighting is baked in, the surface will not update correctly. But uh, this is great for objects that are in the environment that are not gonna move. Um, and you can save a lot of rendering time or take advantage of some of the Octane render qualities in your surfaces if you're using another renderer or just in the OpenGL preview. So that's the basics of baking lighting into textures using Octane for Cinema 4D.